So in this video, we're going to create a private repository for Docker images on AWS ECR. There are many more options for Docker registries, among them Nexus and DigitalOcean. So we're going to see how to create a registry there, uh, build and tag an image so that we can push them into that repository. And in order to push the images into a private repository, you first have to log into that repository. So we're going to see how that works. This video is part of a video series of how to use Docker in practice in a software development and later in deploying that application. So if you want to go through the whole series, here's a link to the playlist and make sure to check it out. So let's see how it all works. So the first step is to actually create a private repository for Docker. It's also called Docker registry. Um, in this case, we're going to do it on AWS. So let's see. So I already have an account on AWS. So the service that we're going to use is called Elastic Container Registry. So ECR, Docker Container Registry. And because I don't have a repository there yet, I am presenting with the screen. So in order to um, create a repository, click on get started. And here we have a repository name. And we're actually going to name it the name of the uh, application that we have. So I'm actually going to name it my app. This is the domain of the registry from AWS. And this is the repository name which is the same as my image name. And don't worry about the other stuff right now and just create a repository. It's as simple as that. Now, one thing I think specific to uh, Amazon Container Service is that here you create a Docker repository per image. So you don't have a repository where you have uh, where you can actually push multiple images of different applications, but rather for each image, you have its own repository. And when I, when you go inside of the repository here, it's empty now, but what you store in a repository are the different tags or different versions of the same image. So this is how the Amazon container service actually works. There are other Docker registries that work differently. For example, you create a repository and you can just uh, throw all of your container images inside of that one repository. So I think this is more or less specific for AWS. So anyways, we have a repository, which is called my app. And let's actually see how we can push the image that we have locally. So actually check that once more. So we want to push this image here into that repository. So how do we do that? If you click on this one, the view push commands will be highlighted. This is different for each registry, but basically what you need to do in order to push an image into a repository are two things. One, you have to log in into the private repository because you have to authenticate yourself. So if you're uh, pushing from your local laptop or local environment, you have to tell that private repository, hey, I have access to it. This is my credentials. If a Docker image is built and pushed from a Jenkins server, then you have to give Jenkins credentials to log in into the repository. So Docker login is always the first step that you need to do. So here, AWS actually provides a Docker login command for AWS. So it doesn't say Docker login, but in the background, it uses one. So I'm going to execute this login command for AWS Docker repository. Uh, so in the background, it uses actually Docker login to authenticate. So in order to be able to execute this, you need to have AWS command line interface and the credentials configured for it. So if you don't, I'm going to put a link to uh, the guide of how to do that in the description. I have configured both of them so I can execute this command and I should be logged in successfully to the Docker repository. So now I have authenticated myself to the uh, Docker repository here. 
So I'm able to push the image that I have locally to that repository. But before I do that, there is one step I need to do. So I've already built my image, so that's fine. And now I have to tag my image. And if this command here looks a little bit uh, too complicated for you or too strange, let's actually go and look at image naming concepts in Docker repositories. So this is the naming in Docker registries. This is how it works. The first part of the image name, the image full name is the registry domain. So that is the host, uh, port, etc. slash repository or image name and the tag. Now you may be wondering, every time we were pulling an image out of Docker Hub, we actually never had this complex long name of the image, right? So when we were pulling an image, it looked like this Docker poll Mongo 4.2. The thing is with Docker Hub, we're actually able to pull an image with a shorthand without having to specify a registry domain. But this command here is actually a shorthand for this command. What actually gets executed in the background when we say Docker pull Mongo is Docker pull the, repo the registry domain. So docker.io slash library is a registry domain. Then you have the image name and then you have the tag. So because we're, we were working with Docker Hub, we were able to um, use a shortcut, so to say. In the private registries, we can't just skip that part because uh, there is no default configuration for it. So in our case, in AWS ECR, what we're gonna do is we're gonna execute Docker pull the full registry domain of the repository. This is what we're gonna see here and a tag. And this is how AWS just generates uh, the Docker registry name. That's why we see this long image name with the tag here. And we have to tag our image like this. So let's go back and take a look at our images, our image that we built again. And under the repository, it says my app. Now, the problem is we can just push an image with this name because when we say Docker push my app like this, Docker wouldn't know to which repository we're trying to push. It, by default, it will actually assume we're trying to push to Docker Hub, but it's not gonna work obviously because we want to push it to AWS. So in order to tell Docker, you know what? I want this image to be pushed to AWS repository with the name my app. We have to tag the image. So we have to include that information in the name of the image. And that is why we have to tag the image. Tag basically means that we are renaming our image to include the repository uh, domain or the address and the name, okay? And AWS al already gives us the command that we can execute. We want to use the specific version. So I'm gonna use 1.0 in both. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna rename. This is what tag does. My app 1.0, this is what we have locally. This is what the name is to this one here. So let's execute that and let's see what the outcome is. And as you see, it took the image that we had, it made a copy and renamed it into this one. So these two are identical images. Um, they're just called in a different way. And now when we go back, we see the Docker push command. So basically this thing here is the same as Docker push and name of the image and the tag. So this push command will tell Docker, you know what? I want you to take the image with tag 1.0 and push it into a repository at this address. So when I execute this command, see the push command will actually push those layers of the Docker image uh, one by one. This is the same thing as when we are pulling it. We already, we also pulled the images layer by layer. And this is what happens in the reverse direction when we push it. 
So this is also going to take a little bit. Great. So the push command was complete and we should be able to see that image in the AWS repository now. So if I go inside, see, I have image tag with 1.0. This is our tag here and push the time, the digest, which is the unique hash of that image and the image URI, which is again, the name of the image using the, the repository address, image name or repository name in this case, and the tag. So now let's say I made some changes in the Docker file. Um, you know, let's say I re renamed this home uh, slash home slash app to um, node app like this. Or what could also lead to need to recreate an image is obviously where when I um, change something in the code, right? So, you know, let's say I were to delete this line because I don't want to console log to be in my code. And now I have a different version of the application where I have changes in the application. So now I want to have those changes in the new Docker image. So now let's build a new Docker image out of it. So Docker build, let's call it my app with a version 1.1 and a path to a Docker file. And now I have a second image, which is called my app with version 1.1. So now again, because I want to push this to a repository, I have to rename it to include the repository address inside of it. So I'm going to do Docker tag. The first uh, parameter is the image that I want to rename. And the second one is the name of that image, a new name. So it's going to be the same as the previous one because the repository name and the address is the same. Remember, we have one repository for one image, but for different versions. So we are building a version 1.1, so it should end up in the same repository. So now here we have 1.1. And if I tag that and images, I have a second image here. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to do docker build. And do not forget the tag. It's important because it's part of the complete name. Um, sorry, it's docker push. And now some of the layers that I already pushed are there. Only the ones that changed are being repushed, so to say. And also know that I just have to do Docker login once at the beginning. Um, and then I can pull and push images uh, from this repository uh, as, as many times as I want. So Docker login is done once. So now that is complete. Let's actually reload this. So my repository now has two versions. So this is pretty practical if you are, for example, testing with different versions and you want to have a history of um, those ver image tags um, if you want to, for example, test a previous version. And I think in AWS, the repos each repository has a capacity of holding up to 1000 uh, image versions. So for example, my app here you can have uh, 1000 different tags or of the same image. Okay, so now again to compare it to the initial diagram that we saw for this complete flow, let's actually switch back to it quickly. So here what we did is basically simulate how Jenkins would push an image to a Docker repository. So whatever we did on our laptop will be the same commands executed on a Docker uh, on the Jenkins server. And again, Jenkins user or Jenkins server user has to have credentials to the Docker repository to execute Docker login. Depending on the registry or repository, the configuration will look different. And 
Jenkins needs to tag the image and then push it to the repository. And this is how it, it's done. And the next step, uh, of course, we need to use that image that, that is lying now in the repository. And we're going to see how it's uh, pulled from that repository. And again, we're going to do it on the local environment, but it's the same thing that's um, a development server or any other uh, environment will actually execute. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to like it. This is a video series, so I will create a new one every week. So if you want to be notified whenever a new video comes out, then subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear in the video, please post them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. So thank you and see you in the next video.